we are starting with flutter flow and this is the ui that we are going to be designing today so for instance if you are given a job like um of course if, if you should meet any clients and and they ask you to develop a mobile application now the first thing that you always uh once i mean once you discuss the what the, i mean the client is going to discuss what the app is going to be about so once you understand what the app is going to be about then the next thing is for to ask the client that okay do you have a prototype of what you want to build because without a prototype you will not be able to be, i mean you won't have, have the clear vision of what you want to do i mean the app i mean what you want to develop so the way ways of presenting uh, a prototype is i mean having a ui us design like this so which is going to give you a clear view and understanding of app, how the app is going to be for instance this is uh, like this app i'm showing here this is a ui design so this is uh, the first page that you're going to see once you uh, click on the app and the sign it creates account page and also we have this uh, maybe premium if you want to subscribe for their package and so and this is notes part up here so if you should click on any of this it's going to take you to much details about the notes that you've written and also so i mean basically these are this is all about the app here so once you once you have the app ui if you don't have if the client for instance if the client does not have uh, if the client does not have the ui so you need to tell the clients that okay you need to present i mean you need to have a ui um, ui us like this so that you can be able, i mean a prototype we call it prototype generally so that you can be able to have clear understanding of what you want to build so once they have the prototype then you can be able to check the design then develop um, according to what you say so now we are going to be creating this screen particularly here yeah. so and also i want you guys to really really pay at, i mean pay attention to this because um of course there there will be a there's going to be a video after this class um then you guys can watch it later later so but please pay attention to this um, lecture because everything i'm going to teach you now is what you continue to use for your app development when you when it comes to flutter flow so um uh, somebody raised their hand okay um, some me baba today please you can speak please almost um, me baba today you have a question like i can see that you raised your your hand okay okay in the midst of no question i will continue the class so now i'm going to create a new project here which i'm going to call it uh this is flutter i'm going to call i'm going to it's going to be i'm going to call it um a note so i'm going to create it now a blank project so these are some templates that you can use also so now this this is the project name and this is the package name so um whenever you create any new project you always get this package name because this is the unique name of your app dot um com dot my company which you can change to if you have a company name then dot so um i'm not going to connect to firebase now like i told you earlier before i said firebase is used to store your data but today we are going to be looking at the design the ui development first so by next week we are going to look at how we can connect our projects to firebase then also store some data on firebase so i'm going to skip this step now i have my page here the landing page uh okay the design page now so now the first thing that you always see in your design i mean on the design page is always this page so if you check the pages here you see that okay this is okay um if you check if you over it you check your widget tree can see what we have here is we have an app bar we have a test here so and this is the um widgets that is containing all of this that carries all of this which is a column and this uh home page actually what's it uh it's uh it has uh okay this home page is made up of scaffold if you check here page scaffold so every page that you are going to be creating will be having a scaffold so is on the scaffold and you begin to lay out your widgets 
so if i check the design now now i can see that um aside this status bar this status bar always comes with um any phones probably if you are using an iphone or you are using an android you don't need to design this so this status bar will always come with uh whenever you develop your application to automatically show like that so but one thing you should take note is that in this app now we don't have an app bar and an app bar is um like a, um, this this is an app bar now so if you have an app bar it will prevent this screen it will prevent you from from anything that you lay out on your widget it, it will prevent it from overflowing to this part of the screen so that's a function of an app bar so it will separate it from the page and whatever you put on the app bar for instance if i go to okay now if you look at this screen here now this screen this is an app bar here if you look at it, this app bar this is a search icon in in uh, a test which a test here and also an icon here so this is app bar so if you scroll through this widget i mean through this page because when you did i mean this this uh, design shows that this place this uh, screen is going to be a scrollable screen so if you scroll through this page this app bar will always stay at the top here so whatever you i mean when you scroll it will go underneath the app bar underneath the app bar so you won't be able to see the uh, test i mean this thing that you are seeing here so the app bar will stay at the top it's always there at the top and it will prevent anything i mean anything from entering this page so we also have what we call a safe area so for instance if you are not making use of an app bar you are not making use of like this page that we are going to be developing here we are not going to be making use of app bar because we don't need it here so this is it's just a single simple page that we are going to be developing so if you look at the design now this page now we are going to delete this um, app bar here so we are left with if you check the widget tree we are left with our column so um so now we are left with this uh, page now so if i if, if you check on this if i click on this widget tree here uh, the model here which for I, which which model all of the <laughs> which which model all of these children here yeah, because this is this this home page here which is the scaffold is the model to this column so it's holding this column now if you check the scaffold if you look at the properties here this is where you can check the properties you realize that the background color is um is white and now you see what you call safe area so now the safe area is on, is on here so if you over through this thing here you if you read through it it's, it's a, it says whether to add indentation on the page to avoid intrusions intrusion on the screen for example it will indent by okay it will indent by enough to pro, to avoid the status bar so to avoid the status bar at the top of the screen if it ex exists so for instance this is the, this is the status bar i'm talking to you about i'm talking about here so because we are not going to make use of an app bar definitely we need to prevent um, any uh, like this test now if we just put uh, put out uh, test widgets here and stuff like that and start uh, um, aligning our widgets when you test your um i mean this uh, when you test it on a real device you will realize that your test will be overflowing to the top of the screen and it will be blocking the um the status bar so and yeah so what we are going to do is we are going to be making use of i mean we are going to switch on the safe area safe area so it's going to enter anything any uh, it's going to block any widgets from overflowing to the, st uh, the status bar so that's that's about the safe area so the id keyboard on tap is um maybe probably you have a test field maybe you have a form that you need to fill and whenever you log into your app first thing that is going to show is um, your keyboard which just bring pop up and say you should enter a test so for now we don't need that so 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 um so now we're going to develop this page here so we have a test widget here now please keep in mind this um rules that you need to always remember let's say uh let me check okay let's say for instance now if you look at this page here we have a test here we have an image here we have another test here and we have this dot dot icon here and we have a button and we have another test test here so 
this um, page, uh, all of these things that we have here, they are aligned in a column. So, for instance, like we know that a column is always straight like this, while a roll is slant, like I mean, a parallel line. So, in a parallel, so a column is to align something straight, and a roll is to align something in parallel. So, that's the difference between a rose and a column. So, this uh, all of this thing that we have here, they are aligned in a column. So, we are going to be making use of a column to arrange our widgets. Please always note this because it's important for you to know. Even when you are working with Flutter, so Flutter also you aligned all of this. I mean, all of these principles I'm talking to you about, you are going to be finding it in Flutter too. Because Flutter, Flutter Flow, I mean, Flutter Flow is the drag and drop of Flutter. So, Flutter is just the coding, coding, pure coding aspect, pure coding of. Of, okay, yeah, pure coding. So, Flutter flow is just the drag and drop of Flutter. So, so whenever you want to align your widgets, note that okay, this uh, all of these widgets, yeah, all of these uh, things that we have here, they are aligned in horizontal, uh, in in a vertical way, which is the column. So we have a column. If we check our widget tree now. We have a column there already. But I'm going to delete this and start from scratch here. So, and I'm going to reduce the screen size, and yeah, you guys can be able to see my screen very well. So, now this page is this is just a scaffold page. Now, so if you look at let's look at design again. Now, if you look at this design, the background we have a color, it has a color. So, this color, I'm going to change the background to this color. So, if I come to this design, I'm going to copy this color. Then I'm going to go to the scaffold primary background color background. Then I'm going to change it to what I copied. Now this is the color, and I'm going to use it. Now you can see the color is the same thing with this. Now one is gone. So then the next thing for me to do now is because I noticed that all of these things they are aligned in a roll. So I'm going to uh, I mean sorry in a column. In a vertical, vertical, they are aligned vertically. So I'm going to make use of column. So I'm going to come to this widget part here. Then I can see this is the column widget here. So I can also search here. You can just search. Of course, I've seen the column, so you can also search any widget here. So I'm going to drag this column in here. So now we have the column inside. So I'm going to set the properties. For instance, before I set the properties, I'm going to show you something. If I drag, because now currently now the next thing I need to do is to add a test widget. So I'm going to add a test widget first. So I'm going to search for a test widget. Now this is test widget here. I'm going to drag it here. Now, okay. If you now look at now, if, if, if as you can see now, this is the test widget. Now, if you look at the column, the column now takes only the space of this test widget. So, and if I'm aligning anything, anything I put inside it will always come to this side. And this is not what I want. I want my widget to be something like this, exactly this way. So everything should be in the center, center of the column. So what I need to do is, the first thing I need to do is to click on the column widget. So I can come to my widget tree here. This is the widget tree. And I'm going to click on this column widget. So, and I'm going to set the properties. Now, if you look at the properties, you can set padding, you can set, I mean, padding here, yeah, and you can send horizontal alignments, vertical alignments, properties. These are properties here. Yeah. So, now what I need to set is I need to set my, this is main axis alignment, and this is cross axis alignment. So, what I need to set is because I want this uh, column, I mean, column to expand from left to right so that any widget I put inside will stay conveniently inside. It won't take the width or the width of the uh, widgets that I put inside. So I need to expand this, and I, I'm going to put it on this, which is I'm going to stretch it. So you see, if I click on this, you could see you you are going to realize that okay, if I make this, it's not actually taking because this test widget is just staying here. So I'm going to make it expand. Now you can see that the column expanded. Yeah. So and the widget is here. So now the next thing is um. If you look at this design, now every if I, if I look at the second page here, every element that you put inside has a padding of padding. If I should click here and 
put my mouse here. Normally, this should work on here. So if you normally, if I should check this, this should was supposed to show. I mean, the length here, the distance between this place. So now every element takes the same padding here, same padding. So what I need to do instead of putting one padding, I'll do. I'm, this is the page I'm designing, but because all of this, uh, this uh, test, all of uh, the components that we have here are only they're not really taking the same width i mean okay if i okay this one actually takes the distance between here and here also they are equal so i'm going to guess the distance here i'm going to give it um 15 padding left uh, 15, uh, 15 padding right so every element that i put inside this page they are going to they are not going to go beyond this place so now i have test widgets here now this test is a middle then i have a an image here and also another test here so why what, what i'm going to do is that now i have this test here so i'm going to align this test to be in the middle now we have it in the middle so if i check the properties of this test so if i check the properties of this test now this is where you can style your test now you look at now we have this is where we can do set the styling of the test now this is the test here i want to change this test because this is a big test so i'm going to change it and you can set, check the properties i mean the properties of this test here also now you see that the test size is 20 pixels and also the font width the font width can, this can be 400 or well, anyway so font width here is actually 400 so I'm going to set my own to be uh, a title test and also I'm going to give it a font weight of 700 so we have it now then I'm going to copy this test that we have here I'm going to paste it here now the test also is in black is black test so I'm going to set the color here so which is going to be black can you see now you will notice that it's at the top post of the screen so what i'm going to do is now so before that and before adjusting anything now i'm going to set this second one too now this is an image here so what i'm going to do is that since i have an image here and i can see that the width and the height of this image is 268 and 196 pixels so first of all i'm going to export this image now I've exported it here. Then I'm going to come to this screen. Now what I need is I need to add, I will add a container rather. So a container, I'm going to search for a container now. I'm going to drag it to the screen. Now I have a container. So automatically this container, this container, if you check the properties here, if you check the properties, it's, it's having 100, pix 100 pixels width and 100 pixels height. But now this can be under pixel width. The under pixel width was supposed to be along this side. But this container is expanding its size because the column that we have that we aligned all of these widgets is a stretch type col uh, column. The property is stretched, so this container is now being stretched. So for us to um, kind of have, for us to be able to start, if we, for instance, if I give if I give this. Uh, of course, you can still take um, the height. If I give it uh, 300, it's going to take it. And if I should adjust the width here and give it 10, it's not going to do anything because it's stretching th through the uh, column. So what I need to do so that I can be able to get the precise size that I want for this co container is I can wrap this uh, container with another widget. Now, the widgets I'm going to wrap it with, I'm going to wrap it with a roll. So... What I need to do is, if you right click, if you are using, um, no matter, okay, if you are using any system, of course, you can right click, and if you right click, you are going to see some options. So these are the options here. So you can do something like this. Right click, uh, is it right click? Yeah, right click, you can do something like this. You get these options, or you go to your widget tree. This is the widget tree now. This is the container here. Then you can also right click on this widget tree. Then you see the same option here. Now what we want to do is we want to wrap these widgets in a roll. So now this is the roll now. Now you can see this container is now 
10 pixels you can see how small it is on um, from the on the width so you are going to click this container again then i'm going to give it let's say 100 pixels. you can see now we are having the correct um width that we need to have so now i'm going to go back to the design what i have is 280 so uh 280, 268 i'm going to say 270 by 200 so the width is going to be 270 270 by 200 right. now this is it now so in the colon properties also if you check this column is the one that is holding this container so i'm going to now i'm going to um, now i want this um, container to be in the middle so what i need to do is come to the uh, widgets as holding the container then set the properties also now one thing you should no note is that a role and a column you can't style them what you can do to them is that you can change their properties the way they i mean their behavior so that's the only thing that you can do with them so now this column i mean this role now i want the child the children that is going to be inside of it to be at the center so i'm going to come to the main axis alignment we also have cross axis alignments so if you play you can play around with this maybe anytime that you are checking you can play around with it and see how it works so what i need to do is to make this uh, main axis alignment to be in the middle now you can see that we have our container is in the middle of the screen so now this container is taking i mean it has a, a background width of i mean background uh, color which is white so but i don't want to um i don't want it to have any color well because i'm going to be adding an image inside so i'm going to remove the color because this is the color here so i'm going to clear it now it's been cleared so then i'm going to give it a, a background image so if you look here you can see background image and you just click on it so over down now we are not making use of network image network image is simply means um, image that you are fetching from a url well now we are i've downloaded the image so this is going to be an asset image so i'm going to click here to upload the asset image so the image i downloaded before um what is it called okay group okay so i'm going to just search group something so it should be this now this is the image yeah i'm going to upload this image now you can see the image is here so you can also play around of, although it's a, it's, it takes the uh i mean it takes the width of the container to also so you can play with this property here to just check out it's going to fit in you can see this one it fits in here also so you can play around with this to know how it behaves so this is what i want here so if i click around if click out of the screen you can see now this is is exactly what i want now so all of these widgets are still at the top don't worry we're still going to make it to look exactly the same way like this so now the next thing for me to do is to have another test widget here which is going to be this word here so first of all i'm going to copy this word i'm going to go to inspect and then copy this word so i'm going to have another widget add another widget which is going to be of test widgets here so this is the test widget then i'm going to paste the word i copied i'm going to paste it now i have it here so then the next thing for me is to align everything in the, at the center so i'm going to align it at the center now you see it's at the center also the test is going to be i'm going to make this uh, primary um, um i'm going to make it subtitle to test one okay this is okay then the fonts uh, the font weight i'm going to make the font weight to be six on uh, okay so i'm going to make 600 so uh, okay so i'm going to make this 600 now we have it now so the next thing is to have uh, this test widget also i'm going to copy this widget here again uh how am i getting the sound okay okay so i'm going to drag another test widget which is going to be this and also paste the same the word i copied here so this is going to be of course a body test so and then make sure that i aligned it also 
to be in, at the center too. So now the next thing I need to do is to have this button. So if you check here, we have the height is not actually okay. The height is not showing now. Ah, why am I getting the sound? This okay, somebody's asking a Agbolaf Fisolami. Okay, you can speak, please. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, is it possible for us to copy the whole, um, the whole sample you're using, like, just copy the whole thing, just like copy the text, copy the whole thing to the page you're working on, instead of doing it one by one, is it possible to do that? Is it copy where possible for us to copy the whole page? Uh, what we laid out, Abby? Is that your question? Yes, is it possible to just copy the whole thing all at once, bring it to the uh, design screen, and then work from there? Is it possible to just do that? You mean from the Figma design, right? Are you saying from the Figma? Yes. We No, 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 no. You know, yes, yes. No, no, we can't do that because Figma, Figma and um, Figma and uh, Flutterflow, they are two different uh, platforms. Figma is just for UI, US development, I mean design generally. But now, this is, these are just design. Now, Flutterflow is a uh, developmental kit, meaning that whatever they design here, we are bringing it to life. We are make, adding functionalities to them so that they work. So we can't copy, I mean, copy all of these things and just carry them and paste it here. Are, it's, it's not possible like that. So that's the reason why we need to design, I mean, to develop it the way they did here or from the design. Is that clear, please? Or, or that's not the question you're asking? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. you answered me already. Thank all right, okay. So I'm going to continue now. We have uh, from the design. We have another. Okay, this thing here. This is just um, whenever you have. This is on body screen, meaning that you can slide left and right. Then you see another page, which is going to be describing the okay the steps for. I mean, what this app is all about. So I'm not going to be adding this thing here. So the next thing I'm going to add is just this button. So. Now, on this, uh, I'm going to come to this widget and I'm going to search for button. So, I'm going to drag the button to here. So, this is the button here. So, this button automatically has um, height of uh, 40 uh, pixels. So, I'm going to make it 80 pixels. So, I want it to look exactly the same way like this. Then, this button, I'm going to copy the color here. So, this is the color. Then, I'm going to come to the properties, which is primary fill color. And I'm going to paste the color here. So now I have it, and I'm going to use this. Now I have the button color now. So the next thing is to uh, click on this um, test here, then copy it, then name the button. If you have now this, this is where the button name is. If I name it here, now we have get started. You notice that this button has um, there is this uh, button. This test here has a weight, and also the font size also is not the same thing as this. So I can decide to give it a uh, font size of 18 pixels and also the font width. I'm going to make it 700. But now we have similar to this now. So then the button also is also taking the whole width, I mean the width of the column. So now our button two is taking the width of the column now. So now the next thing is now if you look at this, um, now we need to, okay, we need to have another text uh, also. So I'm going to come to this place and also search for test widgets now. So this is the test widget and I'm going to paste it here. So what we need to do is to copy this test here also in wordings and then I'm going to paste it here. Now we have it here. So it also has uh, a little font weight and also is at the center of the screen. I mean center. So I'm going to center the test also here. So I centered it then also the add going to add a little 600 here also then the color I'm going to make it the color that I recently used which is this and I'm going to use the color now I have the color so now I have everything I need I need for this screen so now the next thing for me to do is to align all of them to be exactly the same way as this so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to um, okay for instance if i click on the column that i have here i can decide to change the pro pro uh, i mean 
properties of this column and set it to be um to be in the middle if we check the main as alignment so all of these things that we have here is going to be in the middle but this is not what it is here if you look at this so then i can also do something like this again make this make it to be space between now you can see this is looking similar to what we want so but it's not still what we want here so what i need to do is that now i'm going to i'm going to look at uh, what i'm going to do is that i'm going to wrap this uh, image we have here and also this test with this i'm going to wrap them in a column a separate column then this is going to i'm going to wrap this one too and this one in another separate column so they will be together this will be together and this all this will be separately then i should be able to use the space between so now what mm. i'm going to do is now like i said i'm going to wrap this this and this inside one column so if i come to my widget tree now now i have this container here which has a background image of this now i'm going to wrap it also oh no i'm going to wrap the co column itself because there's a there's a column that is taking holding this container i'm going to wrap it inside a column i uh, sorry rather a row that is holding this container so i have it in this so then I'm going to drag this test and this one inside the role, I mean the column. So this is going to come here. So I mean the test has gone inside. I'm going to command control Z or command Z to go back. So I'm going to just put it here. It's still entering it. So what I need to do is just that. Um, I'm just going to put it at the top here first. Oh, yeah. So the test is at the top now. So I'm just going to put this one too to be at the top here. So now we have it here. Then also this second one too should be here. So it's entering the column too. This is the second test. Yeah. So I'm going to make it here. Now we have them together now. So now this one also, I'm going to wrap this button with another widget, which is called a column too. So. <coughs> Uh, okay, so now this button is taking um, is taking uh, the width has been adjusted. It's taking the width. So if I shoot this, okay, now now I may give it an infinity width. So it's taking the width of the column that I I inserted into. So then I'm also going to add this uh, test widget. So so both of them are in the same place. Now you can see that we have semi. I mean, we are getting close to what we have in the design. Now. Okay, so I'm um, now I can give all of this um, some padding so that it's going to look exactly like this. Now this test here, I'm going to give it a padding. So if I click on the test here, so I'm going to give it a padding of let's say 40 pixels. Now we have it here, so you can see it comes to this place. Then also this column here, also I'm going to give it another padding which is going to be bottom padding. So I'm going to give it 40 pixels. Now you have this here too. So if you look at the test here to this image here as a pattern here and also there's a, this test also has small pattern so here so i'm going to give this image another pattern which is going to be a bottom pattern of let's say 30 pixels 30 should be enough or yeah 30 is enough and also this test here i'm going to just give it a 10 pixels pattern bottom pattern now i think we've arrived at uh, exactly the same thing here so look at the design and also look at what we have here so um <coughs> so if you look at this very well now for 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 instance i mean when you are starting out you because for you to arrive at something like this before uh you probably why what what you are going to do is instead of you putting them in a container i mean in a, i mean in a column separating them like this the way i did what you are going to do probably is that you are ju you're just going to add um, a kind of um, another padding excess padding so that it's going to come to the place that you want it to be exactly another padding which is going to come to the top for instance you know everything was at the top before so what you will be doing normally is that you will be putting uh, excessive pra uh, padding to all of these things so that it will come down to what you to to what you need need it to be but the the effect of all of these things is that whenever you you're not testing your app um, and especially when you are running because you will still be used to because you have to run it on on, a, on an emulator like this so that you can see that you can see exactly what you develop and see that everything works very well 
so when you run it on an emulator you see a lot of errors on the debug console that is because it's, it's because overflow uh, overflow error so all of those things are going to be causing overflow so the best way for you is to avoid always avoid putting uh, in, uh, too many uh, padding or padding on an element uh, okay okay you can speak please it's a lot Okay. okay so overflow um okay then i would have shown you something like on this place but so overflow simply means that for instance if you, okay let me drag this element here so you can see this element here this is an overflow because it's going beyond the screen size so and if you have something like this if you run your um your design i mean your development on an emulator like this you see there's going to be a pop-up showing that there's an overflow which means you need to correct it so because if you test your app on a real device then you realize that what you've done is is absolutely wrong so that's what is called that i mean that's what overflow is so you should always try and try as much as possible to um to avoid using too much of padding on your elements so so as so as to call i mean so so that you can be able to i mean for 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 your so that your design your development can be responsive on all device so if you look at this design now this design can be responsive on any kind of device any kind of device that you're going to use because we have different phone size and or uh, we have different phone size so if you test this application on any device it's going to be responsive because you are not adding too much there's no parting like now there's no parting between anything like this this is the only parting we have just little little partings that can't it cannot cause any kind of overflow but it's not like as if you are not going to make use of padding you will make use of padding like now we have padding here between this test and button so i can decide to give this um add a padding to this button of 10 pixels now we have exactly what we need now so so if i should test view this preview this app that we did now so can you see this is how it's going to be on a device now see the picture and see the test see how everything looks very aligned and clean so this is how you're going to be working so if you click on this is a button which is clickable yeah also so so um so that's um uh, this is what i'm going to store for this uh, development so if you have any question okay i think somebody is raising their hand um is there any question do you guys have any question that you need to ask okay at the me in more layer your please you can speak thank you very much sir good evening good evening I thank you so much for the teaching that has been yeah, really yeah. awesome so far. I am so sorry yeah. I joined lately. Okay. So I have two questions. One, this because I'm on the path to learning Flutter. Okay. The um learning that, then learning Flutter itself. So when I saw this, I was really amazed and it made so much sense to me. Okay. But I have two questions. One, what is the end point for using this um this um, platform? Is it to design drag and drop and then export to code or you export a functional like a working app okay um and then secondly okay, okay, okay. should i uh, yeah I yeah, yeah just ask okay ask, right ask the second question okay. sir yeah and then secondly when you um just suppose this with flutter itself what what will you say we is, is there uh, a market for uh flutter flow developers now or is it like the wordpress of um the way wordpress is to web design is that the way this Flutter flow is there is there, is there a, a potential market for it or will people still prefer to pick an actual Flutter developer over someone that uses Flutter flow? I don't know if you understand my question. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those are my questions, sir. Okay. Thank so, you very much. Um so first of all, um let me clear the number one question first. Now Flutter flow, if you uh, maybe if you are in all the class I've actually talked about Flutter and Flutter flow. So Flutter flow is um, a a code like a code environment basically all you are going to be doing on flutterflow you are going to be coding everything from scratch for instance this what we develop here you are going to be coding everything from scratch now this simple thing that we have done if you are going to code something like that your 
you have to have different like you are create some files and you name its own page or anything then your code is going to be up to something like this which is going to be long for you to code something like this so so flutter is mainly code uh, um, majorly i mean you build your app anything that you are developing from scratch everything's gonna be from scratch so flut uh, which means uh so i mean when you are building your app from scratch uh, of course the functionality will be there and everything so but flutter flow now flutter flow is just a low code and what i mean by a low code is that you only get to implement um so if if you uh, just a little code to your development meaning that uh, because there might be some functionalities that are not on flutterflow and then you need to add those functionalities on your app for instance i because i work with a company um, in us which um, they asked me to implement a call voice call to the application i was building on flutterflow so i know that there's no way i can implement voice call functionality on flutterflow because is uh, we don't have, they don't have it implemented yet so i need to uh, i need to of course write a custom code for that so that i can be able to implement the function uh, voice call to have uh, voice call on the application so then i need to uh, i have to export this code to github or uh, download the code source code once i have the source code then i was able to edit it on my screen i mean from this vs code then implement the functionalities uh, and and I was able to implement the functionality. Although also there's, if you look at Flutterflow here too, they have what we call a custom functions. Meaning, if you don't have the functionalities on Flutterflow, then you can implement your custom function here, or a custom widget or custom actions. So Flutterflow is 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 a full, I mean, a development kit, a local development kit. It works like Flutter, <coughs> but the flexibility is not. The flexibility is not as flutter, meaning that um, there are limits to things that you can do with flutter flow for now. But I mean, the team that behind uh, the team behind them, flutter flow, they are really, really working hard, and they are adding more and more features to it. So anything that you develop on flutter can also you can also I mean you can still develop it on flutter flow, and it's going to work exactly the same thing. So flutter flow is not like you design the UI then you import export it to um, uh, flutter code and you start developing from there so now the second question is that now if you the reason why i had to i had to train uh, you guys for flutter and flutter flow is this i know you uh, most of you might not have the kind of patience for you to learn flutter because flutter takes a lot of time for you mm. to really really know how to develop mobile application on flutter so it take you imagine it can take you a year or so for you to be at least be okay that you can develop um some apps so but for flutter flow at least you can still within three months you can still develop a good application which is going to work very well so and then um because i've worked with uh, i've worked on i've worked on fiverr and currently now i'm on upwork and i prefer to stay on upwork because uh, because of some certain reason but now what i noticed on all of this platform is that the traffic uh for flutter flow is quite more than um flutter although because the reason the reason the reason behind it is this imagine i i, I don't even have to send any by uh, any co um, uh, proposal to any clients that they should give me the job or stuff they will message me or they send you uh, uh, they send you an invitation to interview if you can work on their projects I mean, even if uh, the job I got from, I mean, I'm working with them remotely now, uh, uh, they actually messaged me directly on uh, LinkedIn. So, and that was how I was able to get the job. So the traffic uh, on Flutterflow is quite much. And a lot of clients, the reason why clients are looking for Flutterflow developer is because, um, because it's a low code, meaning that they can easily go on the uh, platform to edit whatever they want to edit by themselves meaning that they don't have to pay developers because for instance if you are going to make any edits if you are if you are coding if you have this flutter uh, you are developing an app on flutter if you just want to change any little thing a test just simple test like this on your screen you have to call your developer that please help me to change this which is going to require money so they kind of prefer to use a kind of local tools for them so that they can be able to 
at least edit anything they want by themselves and things that they cannot do they can they will just call the developer to work on it so i feel that's the reason why um flutter flow i mean there are a lot of traffic for people requesting for flutter flow and also aside that aside the fact that they are requesting for flutter flow they will always ask you do you have in do you have knowledge about flutter too because if you don't have knowledge uh, if you don't have knowledge of a flow tattoo, then you might not be able to do some things on Flutter flow, especially when it comes to implementing some custom functionalities. So it's that's the reason why I need to train you guys, especially Flutter flow and also Flutter. So at least if you're able to get uh, some things about Flutter flow, you can start, start and ju just put in for some jobs, and from there you can get jobs even within the four three months. You can start getting job, and then you'll be able to work work uh work with flutter flow then also and you have an idea of flutter how flutter works then it will really it will really really help you when you are developing an application on flutter flow so i believe i answered your questions hello About yes yes you are thank you very much sir all right okay so thank is that yeah, yeah is there any question again please is there anyone having any question Okay, so in the midst of no question, we have come to the end of the class today. So, um, so like I said, I said I have an important announcement to make because I feel like um, the uh, the outcome of um, people I'm seeing that are actually following, I mean, that we are together uh, during this tutorial, they are not really, really encouraging. So, because I need to, I have to put, because I have to change my plans and create time for this class so that I can be able to train people also and uh, so that they can be financially free and get a job also because trust me if you land any job remotely trust me you are you are going to be any you are not going to in fact your money might be you can be any about about thousand a thousand dollars minimum of your salary based on how you present yourself so the money is, is something that you should really, really go into. I mean, you should really, really look into that. Okay, I mean, have, you should develop your interest in learning any kind of tools like this. Of course, you are going to face a lot of challenges uh, when you, while working uh, on Flutter and also Flutter Flow. But always, at least, make money, let money be your inspiration so that you will you, be able to pass through any kind of challenge that you are, you are going to be facing in the process. So um, the announcement I'm going to be making is that um, I'm going to be changing the way things are going to be now. I'm going to be recording a session on uh, during the weekdays. Then I'm going to be releasing it on the channel so you guys can be able to watch. Then on Saturdays and Sundays like this, the, what we are going to be having is that we are going to be having a session, I mean, a cl um, kind of class like this that people will ask questions. You would have solved anything yourself. And if you're having any kind of dif difficulties, you'll be able to ask during those questions, uh, those class. I mean, this those normal distance. So it's going to be like an, um, uh, what's it called? I mean, example. I mean, you just if you face anything, any difficulties during the week while you are working with it with those tools, then on Saturdays and Sundays you can just come to the uh, to this uh, Google Meet then. I'll be able to attend to your questions where you are facing any difficulties. I'll be able to attend to them, then fix any kind of issues that you might be having. So, um, so please, uh, please, and um, please, for I mean, just to encourage me, please, if you are watching the video, if you have not subscribed to YouTube channel, please do. And also the medium platform, I'm paying all of these people. I mean, especially the person that is handling the. Um, the contents I'm paying the person also, and the money I'm paying the person is not a small money. So please uh, encourage me by following the um, the medium page, and also following the YouTube channel. So so everything is going to be is going to be okay for both of us at the end. I mean, I'm giving you guys uh, something that I I I personally I, I pay a lot of money to 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 gain this kind of knowledge. So. Um, so if the only way that you can use to appreciate me is just to subscribe to those channels and follow up and be always i mean always uh, attend this class i mean so starting from next week things like i said is going to change so it's going to be for question and answer class so so that's that's that uh for for now so 
We are going to meet next week. Okay, I think this week, Saturdays or Sundays. So the next class is going to be, um, like I said, I'm going to record the sessions and I'm going to post it. Uh, We're going to post a link on the uh, group, then you guys can be able to watch. So what I'm going to be doing in the next session is I'm going to be, I'm going to create a kind of authentications authentication screen which is going to comprise of sign up and signing page where you can be something like this uh, create an account then you sign up um, using firebase you connect it to firebase and then everything will work fine after you sign up then you'll be able to log in i mean then the user will be able to use the user will land on their own page and see whatever whatever that is left so the ah it's all it's 15 minutes already so that's that about the class so please uh be online and always check the group for any kind of any information so thank you in the midst of no questions uh i'm going to end the class now bye bye